Hello, everyone. Welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Deborah and I'm a faith based content creator. So I make content sharing all about my journey with God to encourage you, hopefully encourage you on your journey with him to let you know that you're not alone. So welcome on the channel. It is such a blessing to have you here on this Sunday. Welcome to today's episode of Faith Talks, which is a series where every week we sit down and speak about a topic that the Holy Spirit is leading me to speak about. And again, I share things with you that I believe can be very helpful in your journey with God also. So welcome to the series. Welcome to the channel. It's such a blessing to have you here. And in today's episode, today's Faith Talks episode, I want to tell you to stop normalizing the manna. Stop normalizing God's supernatural provision in your life, because I think that as humans, we're very good at doing this. And I want to look at the Bible story in Numbers of when the Israelites did this and how that relates to our lives. When we may be unconsciously or consciously normalize God's provision in our lives, it's very hard for us to see him at work, even though he's working. But because we've normalized it, we're so comfortable to say things like, I don't see God working in my life. I don't see that God is blessing me. Like looking at everybody else when it's like, whoa, God is providing manna for you every single day, which is not normal. Now, before I get any further into it, I just want to announce the paid partnership for today's video, which is with BetterHelp. If you do not know BetterHelp, they're an online mental health platform that provides therapy services directly to clients. When it comes to starting out with therapy, it can be very hard and daunting to know where to start, where's a good therapist in your area, and face-to-face -face therapy in general can be quite uncomfortable, but BetterHelp offers therapy sessions over phone call, video chat, or even messaging, whatever is most comfortable for you. So how it works, how you can get started with BetterHelp is that you start out by filling out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs, and you'll then be matched with a therapist in most cases within 48 hours. Use my link betterhelp.com slash B to receive 10% off your first month. Now, if the therapist you're first matched with doesn't feel like the right fit, Fit, which can be common when starting therapy, you can easily switch to a new therapist at no additional cost. BetterHelp connects you with a credentialated therapist who's trained to listen and give you helpful, unbiased advice. Over 4 million people have used BetterHelp to start living a healthier and happier life. So if you want to join myself and those people, then now might be the perfect time to sign up for yourself. So if you think you might benefit from therapy, please consider BetterHelp. Click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com slash Deborah B. And clicking that link helps support this channel. But most importantly, it gives you 10% off your first month with BetterHelp to get connected to a therapist and see if that helps you. All right. So normalizing God's manna, normalizing the Lord's supernatural provision. I want to have a look at Numbers 11. This is when the Israelites had been in the wilderness for a while. And if you know the story about the manna, it's that in the wilderness, the Israelites had nothing. And God rained down this supernatural bread from heaven that was absolutely not normal to feed the Israelites. And at the beginning, understandably, they saw the blessing in it. They saw that this was not normal bread because it wasn't found on this earth, right? And God being God making sure that the Israelites had to constantly lean on the Lord for provision. God didn't rain down that manna in like months supply. Like here's a supply of manna for three months. You're good now. You're provided for it for a while. No, God actually rained down the manna daily in a way that if they tried to collect some for tomorrow to like have that security stored up, it would get moldy and it would grow maggots. So they were only able to collect enough for today which really helped them and caused them to have to lean on God fully every single day. I was reading a book recently and it said that this way the Israelites had to learn that God had the keys to the supply closet and he still does, right? Our heavenly father is the only one who has access to these supplies that never run out. 
And when we have to go to him daily, it's that reminder that we cannot run ahead without the supplier. The Israelites had been eating from this manna for a while now. God had been supplying for them daily, supernaturally. But what starts to happen in Numbers 11, verse 4, it says, The rabble with them began to crave other food. And again, the Israelites started wailing and said, If only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we ate in Egypt at no cost. Also the cucumbers, melons, leeks, onions, and garlic. But now we have lost our appetite. We never see anything but this manna. Then it says in verse seven, the manna was like coriander seeds and looked like resin. The people went around gathering it and then ground it in a hand mill or crushed it in a mortar. They cooked it in a pot or made it into loaves and it tasted like something made with olive oil. When the Jew settled on the camp at night, the manna also came. So this manna was a versatile food. They were able to do a lot of things with it, cook it in a lot of different ways, eat it in a lot of different ways, yet they were not satisfied. They they started to complain about meat and other foods. Like I said before, this manna was supernatural provision. It was not food that was normal in this world, let alone in the wilderness. But what happened is that the Israelites saw it every single day. And when we see something on the daily, we're very quick to normalize it, to act like it's normal to have this when it's actually still God providing, like without the Lord allowing us to have this daily, we wouldn't have it. In our lives, that can be a job. It's not normal that you're working at the job that you're working at right now. Do you not remember how the Lord provided it so supernaturally? But now, because it's become a part of your routine, you go to that da job daily, you've stopped seeing the supernatural provision in it. It's not normal that you continue to have super supernatural favor with your bosses, with your other colleagues, that you keep getting put forward to projects that you didn't do anything to deserve. This is not normal. It's the same with the apartment, with the house that you get to live in. Do you not remember how the Lord provided that against all odds, how the Lord made a way where there was no way? And now because you've been living in it for months or years, that does not mean that that's not still the Lord's supernatural provision, especially when you've had seasons of being unemployed and you didn't know how you were going to pay the rent. But look, you're still in the apartment. You're still there. Like it's not normal to be able to pay your rent on time every month when you're currently in a season of being unemployed, when you're waiting on the Lord for the next instruction and there's always food on the table. Like that's not normal. Yet in the midst of it, we start to complain. We start to moan. We start to just look at things negatively because we don't remember that the circumstances that we're we're walking through right now are not normal. And when you normalize the manna like this, when you normalize God's supernatural provision in this way, it's so easy for us to say things like, I don't see God working in my life. The Lord has left me. I used to be able to hear him speaking and now I can't. I can't see what God is doing. It's not that God has stopped speaking or stopped providing. It's just that we've stopped seeing it. This is just that reminder that where you are right now, what you get to see, what you get to live is not normal. This is still God providing supernaturally against all odds. And the manna is for a set time and a season, right? If we look at this story of the Israelites, when the manna was provided for them, it was in the wilderness before they were to inhabit the promised land. In the promised land that was promised to be a land of, of abundance, a land flowing of milk and honey. So the manna was for a set period of time. And I think that's something we can know in our lives too. Just because this manna, yes, it is supernatural provision, but that does not mean that we're not allowed to pray and have hope for more. There's a beauty, there's a transformation in knowing that you're extremely blessed where you are right now, yet believing God for more. That's the posture that the Israelites were not displaying. That's why the Lord became so angry with them because they were not able to see that God was providing for them in the here and now, even though the wilderness was not their home. It was not where they were meant to settle. It was a posture thing. Our posture in a waiting season, in a wilderness season can either honor the Lord, we can either honor the Lord with what he's doing by recognizing that he's providing for us, even here in the dry land, or we can be like the Israelites and start to complain, which angers the Lord's heart. It's 
it must also in a way be disappointing when it's like, I'm providing for you. Like kind of how dare you, right? Our posture is so important, not just for the way that we honor God, but also for the way that we experience him. If we're complaining and angry in the midst of the Lord providing, then of course we're not gonna see him working. But when we're able to see that, you know, even here, even though this is not my home, this is the wilderness, the Lord is going to do more. I believe him for more, yet I'm able to see that my heavenly dad is taking care of me here. That also speaks to us. That also impacts the way that we get to see God's hand at work in our lives. Being grateful for what God is doing in the here and now and the way that he's providing can coexist with also believing him to do more. Otherwise, if we're expected to just be content with the manna, then we're not going to travel towards the promised land anymore. That means we can set up camp here. This is our home, but that's not what the Lord had for the Israelites. And that's also not what he has for us. How will we grow if we're going to be comfortable in the wilderness? I always think this when I look at my plants, they constantly grow and they outgrow their pots. Like at one point, that pot is so big and the roots are still growing, but at one point the roots are like busting through the pots. There's a growing in the blessings, in our journeys with the Lord. How else will we grow? How else are we going to grow closer to Jesus and experience him in new ways? But our posture, our posture in it is so important. Are we complaining? Are we not seeing that the Lord is working even here in the wilderness? Also, something to note is that in Numbers 11 verse 4, it says, the rabble with them began to crave other food. And again, the Israelites started wailing. Other translations say the foreigners, the mixed multitude. So there were people among them, foreigners, who stirred up the whole group to start complaining. And if we look at this in our own lives, when we walk with people who are not rooted in the word, who will not remind us of God's faithfulness, they can stir us up to start feeling discontent in the blessings that God has us in. When you're not surrounded by the right company and when people are very convincing um, the other way around on the side of the accuser, that's going to infiltrate your mind. You have to make sure that you're surrounded by people who are rooted in the word that can speak life over you, that like Ezekiel can stand next to you and you can both see a valley of dry bones, but they will speak life into you. You know what? We serve a God who can make these bones come back to life. Let me encourage you with the promises of our heavenly father. Let me remind you of the faithfulness of our God. Let me speak life over you, life into these bones. If you're standing with people who are going to affirm the dry bones, nah, this is dry. You just can't stay here. Go somewhere else. Move job. Do this, do that. When the Lord is doing something there right now though, then that's gonna infiltrate your mind. So you have to be surrounded with the right people. So I just wanted to encourage you in this episode to see God's supernatural provision for what it is again. Yes, this manna may come down daily, but that does not mean it's normal. It's still our heavenly father providing for you daily. He's absolutely at work in your life. What can seem so normal and mundane to us is actually still God's supernatural provision. It's not normal that you're able to to live the way you live right now. It's still your heavenly father providing for you. So I just pray that you'll be made aware of that again, that that will stir up your faith, that the Lord is absolutely still working in your life. There's a reason for this season. God is doing something. The wilderness was not for nothing in this story of the Israelites also. They still had a little bit of Egypt left in them. They still had a slave men mentality. And with that slave mentality, they were not able to stand firm and strong as conquerors to take over the land that God promised them. So the wilderness was to get rid of that Egypt. They had to lean and trust on their provider fully to provide for them in the promised land also. So in your life, please know that the wilderness season or whatever difficult thing you're walking through right now, it's not for nothing. Our heavenly father doesn't just do things to torture us and to um, enjoy watching us suffer. That's, that's not it. I've been reading a book called Praying for You. And in that um, it's just speaking about how we can pray for other people and that we're so quick to like pray hardships away and to be like, Lord, take away this hardship when 
the Lord might be like, well, actually, I want to do something in that season, though. I want to do something through that pain that I'm not able to do through any other season in life. The way that we're able to encounter Jesus in the hardships, in the valleys, you can't compare that to how we experience him on the mountaintops. Yes, it's difficult, but when we draw near to the Lord in our hardships, there's a different work that gets done. So in this book, it speaks about how we can pray over people in that way. Instead of, Lord, take this pain and this hardship away completely, that our prayers change into, Lord, accomplish within this person what it is that you want to accomplish in this season. May this season bear much fruit through what you're doing. So I just wanna speak that out over you as well and pray that over you that may the Lord accomplish in you in this season that can't be accomplished anywhere else. And may you experience Jesus on another level through it. You're not alone, he's with you and recognize the manna in your life. The Lord is still supernaturally providing. He has not left you. Now, before I end this episode, I really wanna ask for prayer and this might be a bit strange and I'm not sure what's going on, but I don't know if you've noticed, I've recently been having a difficult time pronouncing my words. This sounds so strange. I don't even know what's going on, but I'm having a very difficult time pronouncing my words and like speaking clearly in sentences where I don't trip over, like ours are very hard for me to pronounce, which I never used to have. At the beginning, when I first started um, creating these videos, by the grace of God, I didn't have this, but now I'm so aware of it that I find it hard to speak. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if it's a spiritual warfare thing, if it's like a blockage in my mind, I'm not sure, but I just wanna ask if you could pray for me, if you could pray for the blood of Jesus out over me and for a um, smoothness in my speech again and whatever seems to be like jumbled up that that will be smoothed out again in Jesus name. I'm not sure why this is happening but it's very frustrating because it makes filming these videos a lot more difficult so I just wanted to ask for prayer for that. See for prayer for that um, that that will just that there will be healing in that. That would be very highly appreciated. So that's it for today's episode, fam. I truly pray that this has planted seeds, that this has made you aware that the Lord is still working in your life, that he's still providing supernaturally. Sometimes we just we just forget about it. It becomes so normal to us when it's actually not normal. The manna is not normal. It's supernatural bread. So yeah, I pray that this has been a blessing for you. It's been a blessing for me to have you here. Thank you so much for tuning in, family. If you're not a part of the family yet, then subscribe to become a part of it. And I'll be back again next week for another Faith Talks episode. Then maybe this time that's what I get. I want it too much, too fast for life.